over a year ago, we started looking at ways to improve our Facebook Messages product. And we realized pretty quickly that the problems that we face are actually bigger than just Facebook. A lot of sharing should be simpler than it is. When I want to reach out to my cousin Danny, I have to use text messages because he just graduated high school and that's all he really uses. My grandmother, she only uses email. I can't send her a Facebook message and expect her to get back to me. I'm keeping this lookup table in my head of how to reach out to each person. Why isn't this easier? Why don't all these technologies work together? All you should need to send someone a message is the person and the message, and that's it. People should share however they want to share. And if they want to connect via email, they should be able to do that. So we're giving every user of Facebook the option of getting an at facebook.com email address. This product is an email, but it allows people who do use email to connect with the rest of us. We've modeled this entire system after chat. You know, there's no subject lines, there's no CC, there's no BCC. When you press the enter key, it sends your message right away in real time. We want this to feel like a conversation among friends, and when you come back to your computer or your phone, you should be able to pick up right where you left off. It's always seemed like a problem to me that when I look at my email, occasionally I see a message from my mother sandwiched between a bank statement and a bill. We should be able to do better than that. So we created the social inbox. When you log into Facebook and look at your messages, all you're going to see by default are messages from your friends and their friends. And that's it. Historically, once you give out your email address or phone number, it's just a matter of time before it winds up in the hands of the wrong person. And your only options at that point are to change it or live with a compromise. We believe people should have control over what gets delivered to their inbox, no matter what the medium. And so with the new Facebook messages, if you change your privacy settings such that only friends can send you messages, then we'll actually bounce emails that come from anyone who's not your friend. By default, the inbox only shows messages from your friends and their friends. But if your grandmother who only uses email sends you a message and it finds its way into the other folder, you can always promote it into your inbox and from then on your conversations with her will be front and center. And of course, you can block anyone or any email from sending you messages. Between this and our privacy settings, it's like your own personal do not email list. The most important part of messages is context. You know, email is organized by subject lines. But when we looked at the subject lines for Facebook messages, the top three were no subject, hi, and yo. It's not a great way to organize conversations. We decided to organize conversations around people, not subject. It also made sense to bring together all the different conversations you've ever had with one person into a single thread. You know, whether those happen in chat or SMS or email, those all now live in one place. If you want to reach out to your friend via text and they want to respond via email, that's possible. If you want to use chat while they're using Facebook messages, that'll work too. And all those different communications will all live in one conversation. Imagine you had the entire history of your conversations with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. I mean everything from, hey, you want to get coffee later, all the way to, you've got to pick up the kids tonight at soccer practice. My grandmother had that. It was a box of letters written by my grandfather from when they were dating. That kind of thing is increasingly rare, and I'm left to ask, you know, where is my box of letters? It's locked up on a phone, it's locked up an email, it's not in one place, until now.